All right, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Joe Pivarunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive technologies for a large audience of institutional retail investors across the globe. So today we're going to talk about a company called AST Space Mobile. This is really a, one of the 12, at least 12 space companies that's gone public using a special purpose acquisition company, a SPAC as they're known. And here you can see a list of the 12 different SPACs that have gone public. We've already covered a few of these on our YouTube channel. We've covered all of them in research pieces. And the decision to cover AST Space Mobile was really twofold. Uh, quite a few of you asked for us to do that. And also there's a great deal of interest from investors in this company. And let's talk about why that is. So whenever there's an investment thesis that's easy to understand, it seems to attract a lot of investors. So AST Space Mobile has a very aggressive value proposition that anybody can understand. So they claim to have technology that will allow pretty much any phone that you have in your pocket to connect to a satellite. So the way that's worked historically is that you need to buy some very specialized phone equipment that's very expensive to buy for the handset and also very expensive for minutes and you use that to communicate directly with satellites. Now, what AST Space Mobile claims to have is a technology that lets any phone talk to their special satellites. So the first question that we might have around that is how is that possible? Now, to understand how difficult a feat this is, we may wanna start by looking at a satellite phone. So I did a search on Gear Junkie and they came up with a number of satellite phones that travelers can use and this one is what they're claiming is the consistently rated best value in satellite voice communication. So that's a $519 handset that's built specifically to talk to satellites. You pay $60 a month for 70 minutes a month, so somewhere around a dollar a minute. And then you're able to whip that out and chat with people around the world. Now, the gentleman that wrote this piece was testing a number of phones, and you can see some of the comments that he had about reliability. So even though this infrastructure has been in place for a long time, these phones are leading edge, there's still problems when you're in remote areas trying to get connectivity. So for AST Space Mobile to say that they plan to give every single person with a cell phone in their pocket the ability to connect to a network on the, on the fly, that seems like a very bold proposition. And here's kind of their uh, spell, value proposition spelled out. So a subscriber might receive a text in their phone asking if they want to turn on the space mobile service. There's a fixed monthly rate that they pay. And then when they're out of coverage for a cell phone tower, they'll switch over to space mobile. And it's all very seamless and, and um, not that expensive to use. So the value proposition is phenomenal. We spend a lot of time traveling as a remote only company. A lot of us go to very remote places and the ability to have internet access everywhere. We've written about this on numerous occasions, mainly because we want to find a company that will let us easily do that. And we haven't found one yet. Now, AST Space Mobile claims that this is all due to the patent portfolio they've amassed over the years. So they have 1600 patents and this allows them to create this satellite that will let any phone talk to it. And then they talk about their investors and list a number of mobile companies. And they list also a number of mobile companies as customers. And we believe that's a bit misleading. So a customer is somebody that's paying you revenue. AST Space Mobile doesn't have any revenue from this value proposition. They have a Lithuanian satellite firm that generates some revenue from the for the company. And that's independent of what we're talking about here, the thesis that we're talking about. And another thing they tout quite liberally are these legal handshakes, memorandums of understanding. So they talk about having signed memorandums of understanding. These mean nothing. They're not commitments. They're vague legal statements that aren't binding. They don't represent revenues. They don't represent bookings. They don't represent anything. And it's very easy for a company to put together a list of MOUs. We see this all the time. So that's great that they've been able to generate some interest from large telecoms. That's pretty much expected. But what it all comes down to is proving that the technology works. Now, we were 
very and are very skeptical of this. And when we saw that people were talking about how Apple was going to be doing something similar, at least allow 911 calls to for Apple phones to communicate directly to satellites, we were blown away. Does Apple actually have this technology? And as it turns out, according to a rather recent article on that entire topic, it was bogus so that iPhone phones wouldn't be talking to satellites. Now, whether or not Apple has those capabilities, we just don't know. Some people had speculated that this was part of a pump and dump operation around Globestar, and that's, again, very speculative. What we're quite curious about is any sort of proof of concept that shows such a technology as possible. Now, ASD Space Mobile isn't the only company claiming they can do this. There's a company called Link, and the gentleman there, the co-founder and CEO, told Verge that there's 5.2 billion phone users, and he wants to turn all those phones into satellite phones. That's great. And when you look at the test that proves the concept, it's listed right here verbatim from that article. And it says they tested the technology using a standard mobile phone in February 2020 with a text message to a phone in the Falcon Islands rather than a voice call or broadband data. That's completely different from a value proposition that's being proposed by AST Space Mobile or Link. You cannot claim to do what the co-founder and CEO here says that he's going to do and then prove your technology by sending a single text. So we didn't find that very compelling. And when we look at the proof of concept for AST Space Mobile, in 2019, they launched a satellite and then they connected it to an antenna in their facility at Midland, Texas to test the ground communications technology. Again, this isn't a sufficient proof of concept. Now, perhaps their investors asked for such a demonstration. We emailed the company and they didn't respond back. Now we can assume that's because they're in the process of launching a satellite that will truly allow them to test their technology. You can see here, we've taken an excerpt from that press release, which was this past summer. They're gonna launch the 693 square foot phased array spacecraft that's gonna allow direct to cell phone connectivity testing. They spell it out right there. So that's, that's the next milestone to watch for, right? We wanna see a bog standard cell phone communicating to another bog standard cell phone via a satellite. And that's the next big thing to watch for. Now, they've already run into some problems there. This is to be expected with any sort of technology company and they've postponed the launch of the Blue Walker 3. That's the name of the satellite. They postponed that launch from, I think it was March, April of this year until summer. Now, you need to be very careful. We need to be careful as investors when things like this happen, because what will end up happening is, is, is nothing disguised as something. And we call this science by press release. So, for example, this is what you might see. You might see that in February, there's a press release how the launch window was solidified. And then May, they talk about the final testings happening. And then June that the, the time is being announced, the actual time in July, they actually launch it. In August, they say that it's now fully deployed and tested. And in October, they're, they're scheduling the date they're gonna test. And all of a sudden, a year is blown by and nothing has actually happened except what they said, which was gonna happen. And that's a pretty low bar to set. So you need to be very careful about, you know, we noticed the company's providing lots of updates and, and communicating aggressively with shareholders. And that's perfectly fine. But what we pay attention to is the only proof of product market fit of traction, and that's revenue. So we think about what that might look like for AST Space Mobile. Well, first, they need to get that satellite into orbit successfully, and they need to demonstrate that technology. So that's, a, that's assumed, let's say that happens by the summer. And then they need to start piloting the technology to generate revenues, because that will prove the concept. Somebody's willing to pay for what they have. Now, the first question we'd have is, well, what does that look like? How many satellites do they need? Well, I believe Amarsat has for their satellite phone network four satellites. So let's say they need four satellites, not just the one, to have something functional. Well, then what use cases do you target? And this is where we have some questions around the company's ambitions and whether or not they're being very realistic. They say that in 2023, they plan phase one will provide coverage for 1.6 billion people. Well, that's, that's a pretty aggressive plan. 
maybe the better place to start might be to look at existing satellite phone providers. So that's a $1.5 billion market. And maybe start offering plans and targeting that niche of customers as opposed to a rollout that targets countries and billions of people. So we'd like to see some more milestones in, in terms of how they plan to go from zero to essentially $181 million in revenues by, well, gee, let's check that next year. And then the following year, a billion dollars in revenues. This is this is, seems aggressive, no matter how, how, you, how you try to describe that. So that's typically not how things work. And this was pulled directly from their SPAC deck and investors need to hold them to these estimates. So at the end of next year, there needs to be $181 million in revenues. Now, the next time we're gonna look at this firm is when they generate meaningful revenue, which we've defined as $10 million per year. So if they actually manage to get through next year with $10 million in revenues, that doesn't come from their satellite business in Lithuania, it comes from this value proposition, we'll take another look at it. So that's what investors need to be paying attention to. Now, the, one other thing we noticed here was that the company has no revenues coming from this thesis. So we're not able to use our traditional method of valuation, which is to take the market cap and divide it by annualized revenues. But what we did notice is that Yahoo Finance, and this is confusing to a lot of people, including us, doesn't reflect market caps for SPACs correctly all the time. So we've calculated their current market cap based on today's share price of $6.52. It gives them a market cap of $1.184 billion. So still above our $1 billion uh, threshold. We don't invest in companies below a billion dollar market cap, but also they don't have meaningful revenue. So it's off the, it's out of the question anyway, whether or not we'd invest in this company. What we will do is certainly an interesting story. A lot of people are interested in it. We'll keep an eye on it and see how they progress with our usual yearly check-in. Now, the importance of revenues can't be understated. And when we talk about revenues, we're not going to be paying attention to those that come and all the revenues come from today, which is from the sale of manufactured small satellites and components, which is the company's only source of revenue. So pay very close attention to where revenues come from. And then another thing we'd point out here, and this is based on the sort of banter we see on Twitter, space stocks, the 12 that we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the majority of those are being manipulated. And by that, you know, stock man manipulation comes in a lot of forms. And what we're seeing are the Reddit types. And these are people who and we can only assume are putting all their eggs in one basket and maybe a few baskets. And they find a stock that sounds like a good idea. And they believe that if they cheerlead it enough that this stock will eventually move them to a better zip code. And that's not how investing works. This get rich quick stuff is very characteristic of what you see in the cryptocurrency world as well. It's all over the place and getting rich is a long, slow, boring process. And those who do have money aren't able or willing to throw all that into a single bet. They're more interested in preserving their wealth. So take what these people say with a grain of salt. They usually don't have a pot to piss in when it comes to having a, an argument they can articulate. And when we present things that go against their sacred cow thesis. So, you know, you'll often see for Rocket Lab, they'll put the little icon of the rocket or for Ion Q, there's this little atom. And then you dare not say anything. Otherwise, they're just going to go to town. So that's a that's always an indicator that that something's not right. So we see that with AST Space Mobile a lot. And you need to be very careful about that because there's, you know, there, there's a there's a great story here. But anytime there's a great story, you really need to start asking a lot of questions. And Space SPACs are very risky. If a SPAC is risky, space SPACs are very risky. You can expect a lot of volatility here, share price to, to jump all over the place, whether that's for manipulation or just because um, you have a lot of retail investors that are jumping in and out of the stock. It's also a relatively small stock, which we're trying to avoid. But as I said, it's an interesting story. We'll be keeping an eye on it. And in our mind, the next milestone would be 2023. Has the company realized any revenues 
outside of what they're doing with their little subsidiary in Lithuania. So thanks very much for your time. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. The article that this presentation references will be in the description of the video. Now, thanks for your time and make sure you just subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'll, we'll be doing some more space related presentations. Thank you very much.